hello friends welcome back today we will going to discuss about the sampling theorem in my previous video we uh, seen in detail the sampling theorem its importance why the digital signal is important digital transmission is important that part we have covered in my uh, previous video so from this video uh, we will going to discuss about the sampling theorem why importance of the sampling theorem that part we have seen here then sampling theorem the first there are the two part the sampling theorem is applicable for transmitter side as well as the sampling theorem is applicable for receiver side and so the band limited the first is that the band limited signal of the finite energy that has a no frequency component higher than the w hertz means whatever for the transmitter side we are able to apply the input analog signal having the frequency component that frequency component is not higher than the w hertz which is completely described by the specific value of the signal instant of the time separated by 1.2 w second and for a receiver side the part 2 this part 2 is applicable for part 2 is applicable for here there is on receiver side a band limited signal of the finite energy uh, that has no frequency component higher than the w hertz is completely recovered from the knowledge of its sample and whatever the modulated signal its uh, modulated signal is a twice that of the sampling frequency which is applicable for the receiver side then uh, in case of the sampling theorem for the signal bandwidth of the w hertz for sampling rate of the 2w samples per second is called as the nyquist rate and that nyquist rate is a reciprocal of the 1.2w measured in the second which is called as the nyquist interval then in case of the low pass sampling in the low pass sampling this is the spectrum of the strictly band limited signal having the bandwidth is the 2w then how to find out the 2w w minus minus w which is equal to 2w and here is the number of the uh, waves which is adjacent to each other having both w fs 2 fs in this way and on the negative side minus w minus fs minus 2 fs in this way means this is called as the spectrum of the sample the virgin of the g of t of the sampling period ts which is equal to 1 upon 2w then in case of the low pass sampling there is a, a g of delta of t minus summation of n which is equal to minus infinity to plus n of ts minus t minus n ts whatever the relationship is uh, given in the complex fourier series representation which is called as complex fourier serial representation of the periodic frequency function and with the frequency of the sample of this g of n of t s uh, which is a defining the coefficients of the expansion so shift impulse function should be given that is the delta of t minus t0 is the function of e raised to minus j omega t0 which is to be given in the complex fourier series Uh, this is for the low pass sampling should be given its exponential function uh, given having the frequency range is given between uh, minus w to the plus w then for the last equation it is the evident that if the sample value is the g of n of 2w of the signal g of t are separated for all time then the fourier transform g of f is the signal is the unequally determined by using the fourier series of the equation because of g of t is a related of the capital g of f by using the inverse fourier transform and it is follows that the signal g of t itself it is uniquely determined by the sample value means in other word the sequence of g of n of 2w contains all the information of the g of t then signal reconstruction Uh, in the signal reconstruction the uh, consider the problem of the reconstructing the signal of g of t from the sequence of the sample should be given that is the g of n upon 2w means for here g of t 
is the integration of that function is able to provide it and our aim is to be find out g of t then there are the n number of the samples should be provided here with the help of this equation then the uh, equation should be given that is the g of t and uh, where t is the function of minus infinity to the plus infinity where the integration of n which is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity where g of n upon 2w sin cosine function 2w t minus n the above equation are the desired the reconstruction formula and this formula provide the basic of reconstruction of the original signal g of t from the sequence of the sample values in the sine uh, cosine function uh, which is the basic role of the basic function of the expansion so each sample g of n upon 2w is multiplied by the delayed version of the basic function is uh, 2 omega t minus n and all the resulting individual waveforms in the expansion are added to the reconstruction the original signal g of t then how the signal is represented uh, basically the original signal g of t may recovered exactly from the sequence of sample g of n upon 2 w by passing it through an ideal low pass filter having the bandwidth is the w and its function is calculated in the uh, in the form of the frequency domain then here is the w and here is the w there are the total bandwidth should be provided that is the 2 w in the form of the or with respect to the uh, parameter of the frequency then the signal reconstruction in case of the signal reconstruction the sequence of the samples that uh, sequence of the samples is uh, passing through the ideal low pass filter then if it is passing through the ideal low pass filter we want to getting the analog signal means uh, from this figure we understand that here is the g of n of ts means n number of the samples is a passing through the low pass filter then high frequency component is obviously removed there and to form the analog signal then aliasing then what is the concept behind it the aliasing see here uh, in practice the masses signal is not strictly the band limited here is the masses signal and this masses signal is not a band limited signal with result that some degree of the under sampling is the encountered as a, a consequence of which aliasing is produced by the sampling process see here mm, here is the uh, we starting from here here is the frequency fs and here is the frequency plus fs and here is the minus fs okay then uh, basically the bandwidth should be calculated is the 2 fs then this waveform uh, next waveform will be starting from here third waveform will be starting from here then what happens the sum part means uh, we consider this waveform here then the first waveform and here is the second waveform on both sides okay then the first waveform and second waveform will be aliasing here so that the first and second will be overlapping and due to the overlapping there is a error should be generated which is called as the aliasing the spectrum of the signal this is the spectrum of the signal and spectrum of the under sampled version of the signal exhibiting the aliasing phenomena then to uh, combat the effect of aliasing in practice uh, we may use the two corrective measures because uh, due to the aliasing uh, there is an error should be generated and then in the digital communication system the error is generated it will be affect on the performance efficiency etc so that the prior to the sampling a low pass or anti aliasing filter is used for attenuated for those high frequency component of the signal that are not essential uh, to the information bearing conveyed by the masses signal g of t the filtered signal is sampled at a rate of slightly higher than the nyquist rate then higher sampling rate what happens this is the one spectrum and for the b the spectrum is instantaneously sampled version 
then it will be able to separate it or to keep the sum uh, frequency or time domain. Hence, the magnitude response of the reconstruction filter will become just like this. That is uh, W uh, Fs minus W on positive side and minus W and minus Fs minus minus plus therefore plus W. This will be given. Then aliasing effect. In case of the aliasing effect, uh, here is the excess component. There are the two spectrum and these are the low pass filter output. Once it will be overlapping together, for this case, the aliasing is happened. Uh, for here, the according to the Nyquist rate, your sampling frequency should be twice that of the modulating frequency. Then why aliasing should be happened? Why there are the two waveform will be overlapping to each other? The reason behind it here, your sampling frequency should be or if the sampling frequency is a less than the twice that of the modulating frequency, then this waveform should be moved towards the original waveform. And to overlap some portion of the one wave is overlapping the some portion of the another waveform. And due to that, the aliasing should be happen. Okay. Then what do you do? Your uh, sampling frequency, you have to be increases the sampling frequency. Hence the adjacent side of the spectrum is would not come on the overlapping of the original signal. Then in the time domain, frequency domain, the waveform should be given here. Then ideal or instantaneous sampling is given here. Here is the original waveform. The original waveform is a X of T. It is a mixing with the uh, spectrum. If it is mixing with the spectrum, just like this, uh, your Y of T output is coming here for T, T uh, for this signal. Here, uh, there are the original baseband signal. In case of the original baseband signal, it is uh, multiplying with the uh, discrete signal. And it is if it is multiplied, then this type of the sample should be generated for the time duration t, 2t, 3t, 4t, 5t, 6t, etc. Then the practical aspects of the sampling and recovery. Uh, in a practice, the sampling of the analog signal is accomplished by means high speed switching transistor circuits and the resulting waveform is a deviates from the ideal form of the instantaneous sampling because of the operation of the physical switching circuit however fast still require a non-zero interval of the time so we often find samples of the analog signals are lengthened, lengthened uh, intentionally uh, for convenience in the transmission so that we wish to evaluate the effect of these practical deviations from the ideal condition. Then again we move towards the what are the different types of the sampling. First is the natural sampling. In case of the natural sampling, the ordinary sampling of the filter duration, G of T is the original uh, pulses digital data is able to provide it. And at a time T which is equal to 0 the switch is closed. Once the switch is closed, that all the digital data is available at the output that is the ST. This basically what happens, G of T is original analog signal and C of T means the train of the digital pulses. Once it will be able to multiply this its switch is after the T which is equal to 0, the switch is closed. Once the switch is closed, this is multiplied by multiplied with the modulated signal with pulse amplitude modulated signal. Means the amplitude of the pulse train, this amplitude, the amplitude of the pulse train should be changes with respect to the information bearing signal. And just like this type of the waveform is obtained by the natural sampling. 
generally which is called as the natural sampling means this train of the pulses is able to follow the information bearing signal naturally hence it is called as the natural sampling then in case of the natural sampling see the analog signal is applied to the switching circuit controlled by the sampling function c of t at a time duration t which is equal to 0 that consists of the infinite succession of the rectangular pulses of the amplitude a and duration t with the period t s then the output of the switching circuit is a given just like this s of t okay natural sampling means its stop will be just to move towards the uh, just like this this is uh, exactly equal to that of the gt the gt into ct it will be able to multiply together then the natural sampling provides the uh, sampled signal s of t and that c of t goes high if the switch is closed the c of t goes high if the switch is closed and uh, if c of t s of t is open then c of t goes low means what happens basically from that equation if c of t is a high then the clock is obtained or output is obtained and if c of t is a zero means for this case this case the c of t is a zero then your s of t which is equal to zero means this parameter is very important if it is one then your output is obtained if it is zero then your output is a zero then in natural sampling the ordinary samples of the finite duration uh, this is to be given that is the s of t which is equal to ctgt and c of t which is equal to fs of ta and fs of ta for this function uh, which is given in the form of s of f which is equal to f of s ta uh, summation of n which is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity cosine function n of fs of t into g f minus n of fs then in the natural sampling the ordinary samples of the finite duration should be given uh, the figure illustrate that the effect of using ordinary pulses of the finite duration then the ordinary samples basically the effect of finite duration of the sample pulses is multiplied by the nth lobe of the spectrum that is the sf by k by ts sin c en fs by t then we conclude therefore that uh, your bandwidth should be limited in between that uh, w means your bandwidth should be less than w uh, greater than w sorry but it is less than fs minus w then we conclude therefore that use of the sampling pulses of the finite duration has no importance effect on the sampling process. Consider the case that is Ta which is equal to 1 so that each rectangular pulses of the sampling function C of T has the unit area. Then comparing that equation we see that the pulse duration T approaches to the 0, S of F approaches to G of F means it is again de, uh, depends upon the value of the c of t then this is the actual ideal sampling process then flat top sampling uh, basically the flat top sampling is the rectangular pulses sampling and consider the situation where the analog signal g of t is the sampled instantaneously at the rate of fs which is equal to 1 upon Ts and that the duration of each sample is the lengthen to the t. Okay. See, this is the flat top sampling. In case of the flat, it's a flat top is the flat. Hence, it is called as the uh, flat top sampling. Uh, your output h of t, which is equal to one, if your t is a greater than zero but less than the time duration t and h of t is a 0 if your t is a less than 0 and t is a greater than capital T. Then from instantaneous sampling we have to be find out this equation that is uh, convolutional pulses should be taken here. Then flat top sampling for shifting the property 
uh, of the data function we have taken here so then uh, rectangular pulse sampling give this formula yes of it how do we recover the original message signal by using the flat top sampling basically the frequency spectrum this is the frequency spectrum should be given and g of t is the strictly band limited and that sampling rate is afs which is greater than the request rate then the request rate means fs which is equal to twice that of the modulating signal then it will be passing s of t through the low pass reconstruction filter we find that the spectrum of that resulting filter output is equal to gfhf and this equivalent to passing the original signal gt through a low pass filter of the transfer function hence h of f which is equal to t of sin c f of t exponential function of minus j pi f of t this will be given then by using the flat top sample the amplitude distortion and delay uh, will be introduced and this effect is a similar to the variation in the transmission with frequency that caused by the finite size of the scanning aperture in the television and the facsimile according to the distortion caused by the lengthening the sample to referred as the aperture effect and how uh, do we correct the aperture effect this is the question in front of you then by connecting an equalizer in cascade with the low pass construction filter the equalizer has the effect of decreasing in band loss of the reconstruction filter as the frequency increases and the amplitude response of the equalizer should be given 1 upon h f which is equal to 1 upon t sin f of t which is equal to pi f upon sin pi f t then uh, here is the flat top sampling the distortion introduced for this case uh, aperture error this is the aperture error this is the information bearing signal and uh, uh, here is your train of the rectangular pulses so what happens this uh, uh, rectangular pulses would not able to follow the information bearing signal hence there is a gap between the sampling waveform and uh, input waveform and hence there is a due to that the error is generated which is called as the aperture error so in case of the frequency domain also here is the baseband spectrum and your this is the sign envelope and whatever the space is remaining this uh, this your discrete signal or train of the pulses would not able to follow completely due to that the aperture effect or aperture error should be generated so the distortion is introduced by the uh, flat top the sampling here the flat top sampling the causes the loss of the high frequency information and this is because the input signal may be the changing while the sample value is held constant this error can be readily observed in both time and frequency domain and this error or noise can be reduced by reducing the aperture width so flat top sampling or whatever the error should be generated here we have seen so how to uh, remove that type of the aperture error uh, in case of the sample and hold circuit for sampling here the input that input sample and hold circuit and whatever the input should be provided by the amplifier and that amplifier should be adjusted the uh, height of the train of the discrete pulses with the help of that switches the sample and hold circuit for a signal recovery whatever the sample waveform which passes through the sample and hold circuit again it will be passes through the low pass filter equalizer and to recover the analog waveform okay uh, up to the here we have just summarize my point here up to the, this what is mean by the sampling what is the sampling theorem what is the request criteria when the aliasing error should be generated how it will be minimized then the type of the sampling uniform sampling non uniform sampling 
then flat top sampling natural sampling how it will be removed there aliasing effect or aliasing error that part we have seen in this video thank you thank you very much any doubts any query please write the your query on my comment page please subscribe my channel and to click on bell icon thank you